Okay. Okay, it is September 17th, 2012, and I'm interviewing Jim Keenan about Hurricane Diane. And the first question I have for you is, think back to the time of the flood. Uh, where were you and what were you doing when you first heard about the flooding? Well, actually, I was uh, approximately 14 years old. I had just turned, uh, just had a birthday, uh, August 14th. So um, I was at my cousin's across the, a block away or so from our house, which was on the river. And uh, we were just sitting on the front porch, a nice uh, summer evening, and uh, worried about the river, and then suddenly saw it ebbing across the ball field and moving towards our house. So we were home, we were kids, we saw it. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, what was your reaction when you saw that? Were you, you know, what was your reaction? How did you feel when you saw the water coming? Well, it was funny because it was late at, it was at night. So uh, we did take a walk around the, the gang of us kids and we walked up the street and we, we did see uh, some people trying to move things out of the way of the water. Uh, and, but later on in the evening, after an hour or two, uh, the water came across and we actually, I actually had it help my grandfather walk up Union Avenue, which is in the flood, flood plain there, uh, in waist deep or more water, and he was in his 80s, so that was an interesting uh, uh, deal to have. But uh, then uh, I didn't get the full brunt of it until the next morning when we went down and couldn't get anywhere near the place and just saw nothing but brown churning waters all over the place. It was pretty devastating when I first saw it. Mm -hmm. And after I had taken my grandfather up uh, towards Ash Street, I went back down to try and uh, see what happened to the, my mother and my sisters and that. And uh, they wouldn't let me back down in there because there were police and firemen then. But I could see the water hitting the Ash Street Bridge. It was flying into the air 30, 40 feet. Uh, it was very scary, very scary at that time. Mm -hmm. um, and what do you remember people saying or doing at the time um, that the flood was occurring? Well, people saying or doing, that's an interesting question. Uh, I think most of the time uh, I remember that they were worried about the older people that were in the neighborhoods. Um, I remember they were worried about the people who stayed in their homes. There was one woman who stayed in her home and ended up perishing in the flood. Uh, from what I remember, her body was found down in Southside even, and it had washed all the way down. Uh, they were worried about, uh, of course, all their possessions and the children. They were worried what the kids were all accounted for and what have you. Uh, it was pretty scary. And then I, I do remember, too, in the aftermath of the flood, people were so worried about illness and sickness because they were uh, getting ready to give out uh, shots for tetanus and, and different diseases that come from those terrible waters. So. Uh, a specific comments, I don't remember any okay. too much. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see, uh, what type of information do you remember hearing um, from, um, you know, officials or whatever, um, you know, and where did you get your information from as it was occurring? Well, uh, it, was, it was a lot of word of mouth. Um, we were worried about my father who was working. He was on a train up in the Poconos that was surrounded by water. And uh, uh, in those days, it was mostly radio or, you know, word of mouth. Uh, TV was just coming into being and getting to be hot. And uh, I think we probably did tune into Channel 22 at those times. But uh, it was mostly uh, on the radio and word of mouth. and. Uh, it was just tough getting information. We were everybody was worried about everybody else because uh, you had to wait until you heard if somebody was safe mm -hmm. or what their condition was. Mm -hmm. It was it's kind of hard getting information around in those days. Um, do you associate any sounds or smells with the flood? Oh, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. That's probably the thing that that brings it back. Mm -hmm. The smell is. You never forget it. Uh, once the water gets in the home and the brown, churling, brackish water that came down, 
it has a, a smell all of its own that, that brings everything right back. Um, in the years since then, I've, in my job, I've been able to work and cover many other floods. Agnes, I worked for like three weeks in Agnes, constantly around it, and it just brought all the memories back of Hurricane Diane. Mm -hmm. Of course, our house was washed completely away, so there was no smell associated with that. But the neighbors' homes, my best friend, uh, three days later, he was scooping mud out of his living room window with a Monopoly board, and we had been playing Monopoly like a couple nights before the flood. So the smell is definitely the thing, the, the water, the color of the water. Uh, yeah, that brings it all back. Any, any sounds? Sounds, uh, no, I can't say that there was sounds. I, I, okay. I know there were some people that, I did talk to one of my friends, Raymond Schmidt was uh, there. They stayed in their house. They were on their second floor somehow, and they survived it. And they told me that they could hear the things hitting inside the house, logs, and there were boxcars washed down from the railroad tracks up above. There were trees and refrigerators and there were all kinds of things piled against the Myrtle Street Bridge and that's probably what caused our house to be washed completely away. Uh, they figured that the things blocked the bridge and the water came around the bridge and our house was the first one near the bridge and it was completely gone. I remember walking down there uh, two or three days later when they finally did let us down in there and uh, I went to where my house was and there was nothing there. There was a, a pipe sticking up out of the ground, a water pipe of some kind, and I thought, wow. And then walking back, I realized I'm walking on all of this silt and mud. There was a car, a roof of a car by my feet, you know, so the mud had, it was like five, six feet deep. You know, was, some things you just don't remember, forget. You know? I understand. <laughs> um, what do you remember about the first few days after the flood? In your particular case, you had no home, so that must have been particularly, um, you know, traumatic. So, what do you remember about those first few days? Well, the first few days, uh, the the big thing was that everybody was accounted for. My father was okay, and uh, I had a brother that was in the service in Texas, so he was concerned about us. Um, and like I said, we went over to my aunt's house, which was a block away, so we were worried about our grandparents and our aunts and our uncles. And because people all lived together, you know, we were all in the same area, so like if it affected you, normally it affected the whole part of your family. But uh, I remember that, and I remember, um, like I say, my, I had a birthday August 14th, and, and so I came out of the flood, I had a a St. Joseph's missile and a $20 bill from my birthday, and that's that's what I survived with the flood. Mm -hmm. And of course, the rest of our family had any, just we had what was on our back. Mm -hmm. That was it. Where did you end up living? Well, we we moved to uh, South Scranton. We ended up on uh, Prospect Avenue mm -hmm. in South Scranton. Okay. Any other memories that's that you have? Anything else you want to share about it? Those are my questions. Um, anything else you want to? Just the fact that. Uh, that there were two people killed there in that little square block area and people go down there now and there's there's ball fields there and they're they're beautiful mm -hmm. and uh, you can still find a little piece of macadam or a little curbstone from the old streets but there were like 35 maybe 40 homes down there with people in the homes and uh, I drive down there now and I, I just think that if people only knew all that was being lived there, all the families and, and what the neighborhood would have been like now. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think of those two people that died. There were two people, one gentleman, uh, we went walking up the street the night of the flood and uh, we were walking in water maybe two or three inches deep on the street of Richter Avenue. And he was out front of his house loading things into his car. And uh, we just thought, wow, that's, that's pretty scary, you know. We walked by and came back down, and and then a few days later we found out he was missing. So that, that was kind of scary. And then the woman who also lost her life. So that was kind of thing. Uh, the thing that stood out mostly that there were two people that 
didn't survive, and there were so many people that were affected by it. I know they say in Little England or Petersburg, and, and it's like one block, but there was a lot that happened in that one block. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No, except uh, in 1972, Hurricane Agnes came through, and I was working at the TV station, and that was much more devastating to the area. But as a result of Hurricane Diane, uh, they put in uh, some flood protection measures that I think helped them in the 72 flood. Like Scranton got flooded, but nothing like Wilkes-Barre. You know, so that would be the only other thing. Uh, okay. Well, thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. Yeah.